In the last stream, we were working on completing the first tier of quests in the quest book here. In doing so, crafting up an automated system that allows us to make an endless amount of basic mechanical essence and basic mechanical crystals. That is this system right here. And essentially, this system is giving us an unlimited amount of EMC, or the idea is that we're using it to make an unlimited amount of EMC. You'll notice right now that up in the top left corner of the screen, we're actually not gaining any EMC. And the reason for that is that our multi servo press here, the machine that is turning the basic mechanical essence into the basic mechanical crystal, has no power. And the reason for that is the last time we did set up a slightly inefficient system down here to where our sawmill that is turning our oak logs into planks does also produce sawdust and that sawdust is banking up and clogging up the sawmill not allowing it to produce any more planks and therefore none of our sterling dynamos are getting the fuel that they need in order to produce power thankfully i think there is a fairly simple fix that we can implement to get our power back on track and that fix comes in the form of our good old friend storage drawers. If we make a regular storage drawer, which looks something like this, this is basically a chest that can only hold one item, but it can hold a very large amount of that one item. And so essentially what we can do here is we can place this drawer directly behind the sawmill. We'll put it down right about here. That is gonna connect there, but that should be fine because what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the back of the sawmill to output like so, and that's gonna push all of the sawdust out and around into the drawer. Now, because the drawer can only hold one item, nothing but sawdust is gonna make its way into this drawer. And so even if these pipes try and put wood into here, that wood is just gonna bounce back and end up in either one of the sterling dynamos or back in the sawmill. This isn't a perfect solution because the storage drawer here does have a limit. It can only hold 2,048 sawdust. And so at some point in the somewhat near future, we are going to run into the same problem where we again back up on sawdust, but we have managed to temporarily kick the can down the road. And hopefully before today's episode is over, we will have unlocked the ability to craft this guy right here, the nullifier, which basically acts like a trash can, which will allow us to delete any excess sawdust that we don't want. There are also upgrades that we can make for the storage drawer, uh, such as the void upgrade, which would delete any excess sawdust that we might have, but the void upgrade does require obsidian, and obsidian, um, I believe, is not something that we currently have access to. But uh, for the time being, at least, our system should now be back online. We should be producing power. Temporarily, what I will do, just because it's going to take a minute for the sawmill to process all of the wood that we need, I'm going to kickstart our system by dropping a little bit of wood into every one of these sterling dynamos. And then from there, the sawmill should be able to keep them all topped up with wood, hopefully for a decent chunk of today's episode. Now that's taken care of, we can look at the first quest in the tier two quest line here, and that is tier two materials. It says, suddenly the basic mechanical essence whispers to you, granting you knowledge of various materials, allowing you to transmute them at will. And so much like at the start, of last episode, we now unlock a bunch of extra resources that we can add to our EMC table. We get diamond ore, we get lapis ore, we get netherrack, we get bones, we get what I believe is zinc, it is, we get cactus, and we get industrial hemp seeds. All seven of those we can claim by clicking the uh, click to collect all rewards button in the top right, and then we can dump all of those instantly into the transmutation table, because if we didn't and we used them, we wouldn't be able to get any more. Uh, as the pack said right at the beginning, there are no refunds. So now that we have all of those, that actually opens us up quite a bit to a lot of new mods and a lot of new stuff. First things first, over on the left here, this quest says continued thermal automation. If you want to continue your path of automation, you will need to create new machines and alloys to help you. That's fine. The whole goal of this quest line, of course, is to work towards the next tier of mechanical crystal, that being the regular mechanical crystal. This is made with a regular mechanical essence and the regular mechanical essence is made in a mixer from Create, a mechanical mixer, with one invar gear, one steel gear, two bronze rods, and one basic mechanical essence. Now, right now we have the basic mechanical essence. We also have the ability to make invar gears because we can obviously make another multi-server press. And at the end of the last episode, we did get our first induction smelter, and so now we have the ability to automatically combine things like iron and nickel to make alloys like Invar. The same is true for the bronze rods here. Bronze is also something we can now automatically make 
with the induction smelter, the only thing that we don't currently have the ability to make is the steel gear. And that's one of the first things that we're going to work on in today's stream. Uh, and to do that, we're going to have to go through immersive engineering. We're going to need a coke oven and a blast furnace. I do see the Twitch chat is pointing out that I didn't put the uh, bone in here. There we go. That has been learned. Never fear, chat. We're good to go. Right before the start of today's stream, I did take a stack of iron as well as a stack of copper, which is not quite finished smelting. That's fine. Um, a little bit of gold and some bricks. And I threw them all into these furnaces here just so that we don't have to spend quite so much time today waiting for things to smelt up. I did also do a little bit of organizational work here. I basically took what I deemed to be all of the important resources and dumped them into this top chest just so they're a little easier to access as and when we need them. But in terms of making steel, before we can get there, we do first have to complete this quest right here called Getting Creative. In order to get into Create, you will need large quantities of andesite. You initially get andesite with cobblestone and high covalence dust or quartz, but once you get a mechanical mixer, you can get andesite from gravel, flint, and lava. So initially we have these two recipes right here. Right now we don't have access to nether quartz, but I believe that is something that we're going to get fairly soon. And then once we've got the mixer, we can use this recipe right here with the flint, the gravel, and the lava. The lava is going to be interesting because right now we actually don't have a source of lava. We do have a few buckets lying around in the chest here, but that's not really an infinite source of the stuff. Either way, we do get a lot of items here for completing this quest, which I'm very happy about. It's going to give us a big head start into the create mod, and completing this quest really shouldn't be too difficult for us. We have some high covalence dust lying around. We have some cobblestone available to us and of course more in the transmutation table should we need it let's do this let's do this we'll take four of those for now and then in terms of making the andesite alloy it is two andesite and then either two zinc or two iron nuggets so uh for us i think the iron nuggets are going to be by far the easier method because we have a bunch of them left from the last episode one and two as a reward we get 16 large cog wheels 16 regular cog wheels 16 andesite alloy 16 shaft 32 kelp and a pair of engineer's goggles, which we can go ahead and put on our head, uh, and we'll get to the use of those later on in today's stream. Completing this quest has now unlocked Immersive Engineering. We have the Getting Immersed quest line. Immersive Engineering adds its own set of machine, power generators, and logistics. More importantly, it will be your first source of steel. So we are kind of jumping over or kind of glossing over Create a little bit because of the fact that the machines from Immersive Engineering, specifically the Coke Oven and the Blast Furnace, are very, very, very slow. And so I want to get these up and running, producing steel, so that we can leave them running while we work on some of the other quests at the uh, kind of start of this quest line. So to do that, we need a coke oven. The coke oven is fairly easy to make. It's a three by three by three cube of coke bricks that we right click with the engineer's hammer. You'll see even in the quest book here, it mentions how slow the coke oven is at turning regular coal into coal coke. Thankfully, the coke brick itself is not too expensive. It requires clay balls, regular bricks, and andesite alloy, all of which we have in fairly large quantities. I did smelt some bricks up between streams, and we also have access to unlimited clay in our transmutation table. And so getting 27 coke brick is not going to be a problem for us. The next one, however, this one right here, the blast furnace, is a little bit trickier. This is going to require, uh, again, the same 3 by 3 by 3 cube, but this time of blast brick and blast brick requires the same regular Minecraft brick, the same andesite alloy, but then instead of clear, we need nether brick. So we are going to need 36 nether brick to make 27 blast brick. And of course, we get that nether brick by smelting nether egg. But thankfully, we did just unlock the ability to pull a nether egg out of our transmutation table. And so real quick, let's grab that. Let's divide it by, let's say, four, just so we can smelt this nice and fast over in our wall of furnaces. And then while we wait for those, let's get our coke oven down. So let's see here. I'm going to put it here. Once you've got the three by three down, all we have to do is right click with the engineer's hammer in the center. You can do this on any side, but the uh, side that you right click will be the side that is the front of the coke oven. So we're going to do it right about there. And now this is basically a big old machine that doesn't require power, but will very, very, very slowly, but surely turn regular coal into coal coke. You can see at the top there, there's a percentage bar. When that gets to 100, we will get our first bit of coal coke and we'll also get a little bit of creosote oil. That's this stuff here. Each piece of coal gets you half a bucket worth of creosote, so it's two pieces of coal 
per bucket of creosote. The creosote can be used in the future to make treated wooden planks, and those treated wooden planks can be used to make all kinds of things from immersive engineering, some of which we might look at because immersive engineering does have the ability uh, to generate redstone flux without any kind of fuel input, uh, those being these here, the uh, water wheel and the windmill, both of those can generate passive redstone flux for us, which could be uh, quite useful for powering setups like this so we don't have to continually rely on our sterling dynamos. Uh, the trouble with them, of course, is they don't produce a lot of power, and so we could possibly need you know, multiple water wheels or multiple windmills if we wanted to power at least our early game with those, uh, those options. For now, though, how are we doing over here? We're almost there on the nether brick. You do need to be moved to a different furnace that has some semblance of fuel. Let's grab all of these. The Twitch chat is reminding me that we do have access to the time in a bottle. This is a super nifty item. It says the time in a bottle can temporarily speed up blocks. How much you speed things up is limited by how long you've had the item in your inventory. So it is quite expensive. Three gold, two diamonds, two lapis, one clock, which is four more gold with a glass bottle and some redstone. That's a lot of gold, and it's also a lot of diamond as well. Uh, now, thankfully, this should be fine. How many diamonds do we get from pulverizing diamond ore? We get two diamonds, and then there's an additional 50% chance that we get, I guess, a third diamond. So if we take two diamond ore here, we can drop that into the pulverizer. Between streams, I did put a little bit of redstone ore in the pulverizer. I put a full stack in here so that we had some redstone ready to go. You'll see that our system for fueling the sterling dynamos here is not the best system in the world. There is a little bit of spillage down there, which we'll definitely look at fixing in the uh, in the near future. But uh, real quick, let's grab our gold and let's see if we can't make a regular Minecraft clock. We can. We do have glass, and so I think we should be able to make a regular old glass bottle. We can. And then finally, I think the only other thing we need is lapis, which once again, we can do down in the pulverizer. So we'll take our diamonds. We got five diamonds there from two diamond door. So one of them did get the 50% chance, which is exactly what you would expect. Again, I think we only need one lapis or here really, but we've dropped two in uh, because we might need more lapis later on in today's stream. 12 lapis per lapis or is very nice indeed. And with that, we should have everything to make the time in a bottle. Nice. So as the quest suggests, this slowly but surely stores time. So the longer you hold it, the more time it stores. You can then use that time, like you can spend that built up time to make certain machines faster. Now, unfortunately, we can't use it to make the Coke oven faster because the Coke oven is a big old multi-block machine. If you found a way to right click this onto the center block of the Coke oven, then you could look at making it faster. But, um, but unfortunately for now, we can't use it to make the Coke oven faster. What we could do is over here, we could shift right click on the multi-server press. You'll see this little X2 multiplier comes up. And now this machine is two times faster than it was before. We could do it again, go up to four times. As soon as we get enough time in our bottle to do that, I'm not quite sure of the exact numbers. I think we might need 30 seconds if we're going to go from 2X to 4X. But the more time you have in the bottle, the faster you can make different machines, which is particularly useful when you're in a hurry for just like one machine to be just that little bit faster. Either way, for now, we're mostly just going to keep that in our inventory and let it slowly but surely back up on time. Over here, we do have all of our nether brick. And so I think we should have basically everything we're going to need to make the 27 blast brick. We almost do. Did I miscalculate there? I did not. We just don't have enough regular Minecraft brick. That is fine. Let's grab some clay. Let's drop that in over here. And again, this is one of those situations where we can do something like this and make the furnace just that little bit faster. And once we have eight more brick, we should be able to craft up the remaining blast brick. And at that point, we can do the exact same thing that we did with the Coke oven. Building out a three by three cube and then right clicking the front to form the blast furnace. Nice. So uh, we did get some more XP as a reward there, which is very nice indeed. The Coke Oven Quest does want us to actually have cold Coke. That is fine. And we do get more as a reward, which is very nice indeed. And then this quest here wants us to hand in our first steel ingot. So this is fairly straightforward. You can put either charcoal or coal coke into the blast furnace. You can't use regular coal, unfortunately, which does make it a little tricky. But what you can do here is you can put in iron ingots and you can put in coal coke. And that's going to, again, very slowly, as you can see at the top, produce steel. While we wait for that blast furnace to finish its first piece of coal, I did notice these two quests down here, the Invar 
and the bronze quest line. These are pretty interesting in that uh, they just require us to have one bronze and one invar, but as a reward, they give us 16 more of each alloy, which I think is going to be very useful for us. We already have a ton of bronze, but getting more is uh, not something I'm going to complain about. The same is true for invar here. We made some of that in the last stream, and so getting more of that is going to be very helpful, especially because we need both invar and bronze to get this uh, next tier of mechanical essence. And much like with the first mechanical essence, I do believe that as soon as we craft the first regular mechanical crystal here, we get 16 more of them as a reward, which again is going to be a nice big influx of EMC. Not that we necessarily need it, we are up at 204,000 EMC, but there is our first steal, which again does give us eight more as a quest reward, which is very nice indeed. And in fact, now once we get the mechanical mixer and the basin from Create, I think we can manually at least make this regular mechanical essence. So let's bookmark both of these. And even though it's not the ideal way of doing things, I'm also going to uh, manually crank the mixer. So let's get a hand crank as well, this guy right here. We are going to automate all of this, of course, uh, in the future, but uh, initially let's try and see if we can't just get one of each of these to complete the quest and also get us that big EMC bump. So the basin is made with a ton of andesite alloy. The hand mixer is made with a cogwheel, which we have, an andesite alloy, which is made by stripping a log and then right-clicking it with an andesite alloy. That's also easy enough. And then finally, we need a whisk, which is five iron plates and two more andesite alloy. So basically, we need a bunch of andesite alloy here. That is not going to be a problem. Let's take a ton of cobblestone out of the system. Let's grab our covalence dust. Never mind, we already have it. We'll do this and this. We can always make more of that covalence dust in the future should we need it. And then if we do something like this, we're going to get a ton of andesite alloy, allowing us to make the basin. We can then get one oak log, drop that down on the ground, right click with an iron X to strip it, and then right click with the andesite alloy to transform that into andesite casing, which we can then pick up. And then the final piece of the puzzle was that whisk. The question here is, do we have five uses left on our hammer? One, two, three, four, five. We do actually the perfect amount of uses left, which is fantastic. From there, we can make ourselves the whisk, we can make the mechanical mixer, and then if we want the hand crank, it's super cheap, it's three planks and one andesite alloy. Planks we do have, but we only have two of the three. Thankfully, we can take our chisel here and then re-chisel this one back into a regular oak plank, at which point, boom and boom, we have, I believe here, champ, everything that we are going to need to get our first regular mechanical essence. So the way that we set this up is we place down the mechanical mixer. And again, all of this is, is very temporary. We'll have to make the base bigger to make room for when we automate the making of regular mechanical essence. But right now, what we can do is we can place the mechanical mixer on top of the basin by shift by clicking like so. And then in order to actually use the mechanical mixer, we have to place down a small cog wheel right next to this. You can do it on any of the four sides here. From there, we want to place our hand crank onto the cogwheel. Again, top or bottom will work, but you just want to right click it on like so. And now basically we can right click the hand crank and make the mechanical mixer spin. Now, I think we should be producing enough kinetic stress units here to make this work. Essentially, for those who don't know, within Create, you produce kinetic stress units and then use those kinetic stress units to power machines. It's basically their version of Forge Energy, FE, Redstone Flux, that kind of thing. So uh, over here, as we spin the hand crank, we produce 256 stress units. And then over here, this uses 128. This is where the goggles come in. If you don't have the goggles on, you can't see how much this is making. You can't see how much this is using. As soon as you put the goggles on, it shows you the current usage and the current generation. So this should be fine if we were to make a steel gear, which we can do with the multi server press. And in fact, it looks like you can't manually craft this. So it looks like we do have to use the multi server press. That's fine. We'll temporarily hijack one of these multi-server presses for the steel gear. Uh, we then do also need an invar gear as well. Let me bookmark this so we can come back to it. Um, I do only want to make one steel gear for now because I don't want to waste any of our steel unnecessarily. Again, thankfully, invar was given to us, so we can do something like that. That's going to produce us the invar gear. And then as far as the bronze rod goes, this can be crafted manually. It's not as efficient but I kind of don't want to take these 64 copper rods out of here. Although I guess what we could do actually is we could just take one bronze, drop that one bronze into our multi-server press, 
take the 64 rods out and just place those into here. That's going to be completely fine. And it does mean we get the maximum efficiency that we possibly can out of our rods. Once we have all of the pieces, the steel gear, the bronze rod, the invar gear, and of course, let's not forget one basic mechanical component, we can then put all of those into the basin. You can just drop these in. So one, two, three, four, and five. Once they're all in there, all we should have to do is hold down, right click on the hand crank, and then boom, look at that. We have mixed something up. And if we right click again, we can pull out the regular mechanical essence. Just like before, we need to put this into the multi server press. So we'll do something like this. I'm just waiting for this bar here to finish so we don't waste any of that power. Let's go ahead and swap it out as soon as it's done. There we go. It's pretty slow. Uh, I am going to temporarily turn the output off here so that we don't instantly use up the uh, the cube, even though it doesn't really matter too much. We can, of course, do something like this to make it a little bit faster. And boom, regular mechanical crystal. Let's drop those back in. Let's claim our reward of 16 extra regular mechanical crystals, which of course we can dump instantly into the transmutation table. We're now up at over 600,000 EMC. We're two thirds of a way to a million, which is very nice indeed. And that's it. That's how we make the regular mechanical essence. The tricky part now is automating that entire process. Now, I don't think it's going to be too difficult. The hardest part might be steel because automating the production of Invar and bronze is not going to be too difficult. And then turning those into Invar gears and bronze rods is also going to be fine. It's just more multi-servo presses with more gear working dies and more rod dies. The same is true for turning steel into steel gears. That's just another multi-servo press. But the only tricky part then would be the steel, especially given that the blast furnace isn't automatable, at least not in its current form. You can't put iron in here or take steel out of here automatically. Hoppers don't work, pipes don't work. Uh, to make it automatic, we are going to have to upgrade to the improved blast furnace, which uh, we can do by making the reinforced blast brick. This stuff right here, if we can get 27 reinforced blast brick, which is just regular blast brick with a steel plate, we can then upgrade this to the improved blast furnace, which is able to be automated. And at that point, we could also look at crafting some of these blast furnace preheaters as well, which allow the blast furnace to become faster at the cost of redstone flux, at the cost of power. So we could potentially look at using those if we were not happy with how fast things are going, but it does mean that initially, we kind of just need to, um, to produce 27 steel before we can really look at automating any of that, which should be fine. Let's take a bunch of coal here and pulverize that to try and maximize the amount of coal that we can get, maximize our, our value. We can then dump all of that coal, of course, into the coke oven. Thankfully, the coke oven can be automated in its current form. There's no improved coke oven. Already, we could hop her in and pipe out the coal and the coal coke. It's just the blast furnace that needs the, uh, the improvement to be automated. While we wait for all of that to happen, there are a few things around here that I would like to look at getting. The first of which is this one down here, the infinite stake, which seems incredibly useful and definitely my kind of item. So to make this infinite steak here, we need eight wheat and we need a transmutation tablet, which is a super interesting item because it's essentially the transmutation table, but with the added benefit that we can carry it around with us. So uh, once again, if we kind of hijack one of these multi server presses, we'll use this one here and we get three more invar plates. Once again, we will use our time in the bottle to make this just a little bit faster. I'm also going to dump a lot of this stuff here into a chest because we don't need to be carrying all of it around with us all of the time. The same is true with uh, some of the stuff from Create. We will come back to that in the near future, but for the time being, I'm going to put it safely away in my valuables chest. There are the Invar plates, and in order to craft up the transmutation tablet, we just need one transmutation table, which we do have spare, along with four stone and four Invar plates. So boom and boom, and now essentially this is a transmutation table, but we can carry it around with us and we can use it anywhere we like, which is super useful and does kind of get rid of the need to have one of those down. We do want to make sure we keep moving this uh, coke coke over because we do want to get up to 27 steel. But now the trickier part in the infinite stake is the wheat, because right now we don't have any seeds. But uh, I do think it tells us here that we can crush bones into bone meal to spawn grass and get seeds for a source of food. So if we take our bones, which we can pull from our newly crafted EMC tablet, I do believe that, of course, as per usual, you can craft these down into bone meal. 
And then from there, we can use those to generate grass. We can also mine the grass to get seeds and poppies. And for us, we are specifically looking for wheat seeds. Once we have the wheat seed, we can then eat, hopefully, for the last time here, some of this uh, bread that we were given at the start of the pack. And then from there, we do need just a regular Minecraft hoe, which should be fine, right? Let's get two sticks, and then let's take, I guess, two iron. That gets us a hoe. We can then plant the wheat and use our bone meal here to rapidly grow that wheat. And once we have eight wheat, we can then take that wheat and craft it with our transmutation tablet. This is gonna use up the tablet, but it gives us infinite steak. It says full cost meal, infinite food via your EMC. And so I think the way this works, if I'm not mistaken, is that it's gonna take EMC out of our EMC network, but it's gonna use that EMC to fill up our hunger bar. I don't know if we have to eat this. We do. Oh, but we can just keep eating it. I see, okay, so it doesn't fill it up automatically, but it is an infinite source of food. Not quite as useful as I was hoping. I was hoping it would just do it passively, but the fact that we can just keep this on us, and then basically every time we want to eat something, it's just gonna take 64 EMC out of our system, is quite useful. It means we don't have to keep worrying about making more bread or making more food in general, which is pretty nifty. I am gonna go ahead and take this transmutation table here and craft that up into a tablet as well, just so we don't have to come back to it uh, in the same physical spot every time we need it. And boom, nice. Okay, so we've got that. Let me dump all of these seeds away into our chest. We don't need to hold on to all of those for the time being, although some of those could come in useful later on down at the line. Now, there are a few other interesting tidbits here. For one, there is this quest here for an alternate source of redstone. And so at some point in the future, we could look at getting a redstone via the use of cinder flour, which we can get from netherrack. So we can take netherrack crush it using the wheels from Create, and then we can use the cinder flour that makes and wash that to produce redstone, which is a very nifty way of getting redstone and should be, I think, a fair bit cheaper than using the redstone ore in the transmutation tablet because right now the uh, redstone ore in here costs 64 EMC and we get about six to eight redstone, I think, from pulverizing that. We do, we get six with a chance of getting seven. So right now that's a fairly expensive uh, EMC to redstone ratio, whereas with this alternate recipe, it's basically one EMC per redstone because nether ink costs one EMC, and in fact, maybe less than that because you do have a 50% chance of getting an extra cinder flower per EMC, and so it brings the cost of redstone down to like 0.75 EMC per redstone, which is very cheap. There's also this quest here for soul sand, which just gives us some soul sand, which I believe is going to go into our transmutation table. It is indeed fantastic. We also do have the option over here at looking at speeding up our thermal expansion machines. For example, right here, the hardened integral component quest. It says integral components can be inserted into thermal machines to increase their base values. And this recipe has been made a fair bit cheaper actually, to the point where we could in fact look at using some of our basic mechanical essences to make at least one of these hardened integral components. We do still have some inval lying around. We've got a ton of redstone ready to go. And essentially, you'll see there, it's a scale factor two, which I believe means it's going to double the power usage of this machine, which is currently 20 redstone flux per tick. Uh, you place these into the augmentation tab, like so. And now this is using 40 redstone flux per tick, but in doing so, it's gonna be twice as fast. Now, that should be fine, I think. We are producing 160 redstone flux per tick, which is not a lot. And if you add up all of the machines here, it is more than 160. The good news though, is that not all of these machines are running all of the time. For example, the sequential fabricator and the multi-server press making copper rods. They're not always running. The same is true for the redstone furnace here, making copper for those copper rods. That's not always running. And so we should, I think, have enough power to make this multi-server press faster, especially because this multi-server press here is currently the bottleneck that is slowing the whole operation down. We are banking up slowly but surely on mechanical essence and of course once we do back up on 64 mechanical essence then all of the rest of the machines will also start to back up and eventually we'll be using even less power which is maybe good now we do get a second hardened integral component here as a reward you can only put one in each machine so putting this in uh, isn't possible but i don't really know if there's a good use for this right now like we could put it into one of these two but making one of these two faster doesn't really matter because we need the same amount of iron gears as we do aluminum gear. So for the time being, I think we can just drop this maybe into our dynamo, actually. Yes, we can. We can increase our output to 80 redstone flux per tick by uh, just dropping that 
into the Sterling Dynamo, which is just handily going to offset the extra 20 red stone flux per tick that we just used in the uh, multi server press. Another quest that we do have access to here now is uh, this one right here, the Auxiliary Cactus Questline. Uh, the Auxiliary Cactus removes any excess secondary outputs you may not want. This is super easy to make. It's one cactus and four nuggets. I keep walking over here thinking that my uh, table is going to be there. It's not. We can grab a cactus, of course, and we should still have a couple of iron nuggets lying around. And so if we do something like this, we can craft an augment for our thermal expansion machines. This is an augment that deletes secondary outputs. This is super useful in the case of the sawmill because putting this in here now stops that sawmill from producing any sawdust. You will notice that occasionally the sawmill does go over 64 items. Uh, I think that is intentional. It's, a, it's an odd way the mod works, but sometimes if an item comes back through the pipe, you end up with over a stack of items in here, sometimes all the way up to, uh, to 69. But um, I do believe that that should prevent any more sawdust from being made because now the only output is wood. And you'll see that is working because before it was leaving a slot spare here for sawdust. Now all four slots are being used for planks, which is very nice indeed. And then uh, over here, we still have this 679 sawdust, which we're going to keep around because we can use this to make paper. And so at some point in the near future, instead of having to grow a bunch of sugarcane, we could just come over and grab this if we end up needing a ton of paper. You know, if we needed to make some books for enchanting or anything like that, having that just lying around ready for us to use is going to be very nice indeed. I don't think we need that infinite wheat there, so we can get rid of that for the time being as well. All right, so not too long later, we've managed to acquire 27 steel, which is enough to upgrade the blast furnace here to the improved blast furnace. However, it looks like that might not be the best course of action because by the looks of it, we can use thermal expansion machines to kind of automate all of the process here. For example, there's a quest right here for the pyrolyzer. It says the pyrolyzer is an RF alternative to the coke oven. So we can use the uh, pyrolyzer here to produce coal coke. If we look at the recipe uh, with coal, we can drop that into a pyrolyzer and that will use 4,000 redstone flux to produce one cold coke and one tar with a little bit of creosote. Uh, the tar we don't really need, but we could delete if we wanted to using the cactus module, or we could use it for power in a sterling dynamo. And then the same is kind of true as well for the creosote. The creosote we could either delete or alternatively, you can use that and a compression dynamo also to make a decent amount of power. And then from the steel point of view, it turns out you can actually make steel using the induction smelter. I didn't read this quest thoroughly enough, but it does say down here, alternatively, you can use the induction smelter for a heavy RF cost. So it is going to use more redstone flux, but we do have the option of putting coal coke and iron into the induction smelter, again with 4,000 redstone flux to make steel, which I think is gonna be a fair bit faster than doing it even with the improved blast furnace. Although I do think the improved blast furnace would have looked cooler to set up. Now, the only trouble with using thermal expansion machines is the power cost, right? Uh, if we're going to run both a pyrolyzer and an induction smelter, that's going to require more power. And whilst we could definitely look at putting down more sterling dynamos, like down here, we're definitely producing more wood than we need to, as you can see by the fact that we have planks spewing everywhere, that is maybe not the best solution. And in fact, somebody in the Twitch chat has pointed out that there's a way for us to produce basically what seems like infinite power using the magma crucible here. So the quest says the magma crucible can, among other things, liquefy cobblestone and netherrack into lava. Liquefying netherrack costs less RF and is therefore faster. So what we can do here is we can take the netherrack from our transmutation tablet, again, using an EMC link, and pump that into the magma crucible. The magma crucible is then going to use 1,500 redstone flux to produce half a bucket of lava. That means it's going to take 3,000 redstone flux to make a full bucket of lava. But we can then put that full bucket of lava into a magmatic dynamo, which is like the Sterling Dynamo, but instead of using regular fuel items, it uses liquid fuel items like lava. And in here, one bucket of lava, which remember a second ago only costs 3,000 redstone flux to make, produces 100,000 redstone flux. And so I think it's probably going to be well worth it for us to look at retiring our sterling dynamos and moving over basically entirely to magmatic dynamos. To make this happen, we need more of basically everything that we've made a bunch of so far. We need another redstone flux coil, another machine frame, two nether bricks, two invar gears, and some glass. None of that seems too difficult. We have enough nether brick to make the nether bricks, so we'll take two of those. The rest can go back. We do not have enough invar 
However, that's fine. We did make our first induction smelter last episode, and so now we can go ahead and throw that down somewhere around here. I do kind of want to move our machines upstairs. Like, I don't love that this pulverizer is just kind of sitting here. We could definitely do with um, an energy cable that is accessible on the surface. But uh, what we can do, of course, now is we can go and grab some iron and some nickel in ingot form, drop both of those into the induction smelter, and use that to produce the invar for us. Of course, we could take out the integral component and drop that in over here to make it a bit faster. And if we really wanted to, we could use some of the 35 minutes in our bottle here to make this even faster. And you'll see it's making the invar substantially quicker thanks to those upgrades. Once we have those, I do believe we have to use the... Oh, no, we don't. We can craft these manually. It is more expensive to craft them manually, but given that it's just one iron nugget more expensive, I, um, I think it's well worth just crafting those manually as opposed to interrupting the system behind us. And then from there, we just need another machine frame, which is going to require some of the tin that we have in here. And we need the gold and the redstone in order to make the flux coil. So boom, there's our flux coil. Boom, there's our tin gear. Boom, there's our machine frame. And boom, there's our magma crucible. So let's expand out this little platform beneath us here and let's see if we can't get this up and running. Actually, real quick, before we expand it, let's get another Invar gear and let's get another redstone flux coil and let's make our first magmatic dynamo. I think we're going to want quite a few of these, but before I make it, I do want to see just how fast the magma crucible is. All right, so I've made this platform a little bigger. I've also made another EMC link here for us to generate netherrack. So what we'll do is we'll put down the EMC link and we'll put down the Magma Crucible. Let's put the Magma Crucible down like here for now, just so we can get power from our Sterling Dynamos. And then let's do something like this with the EM ceiling so that we can automatically pull and set auto inputs on Netherrack. We're gonna right click that on the EM ceiling. That's gonna start producing Netherrack. Now there are higher tiers of EM ceiling, and in fact, we could make one right now. This is useful because right now we're limited to only being able to pull one Netherrack per second, which seems completely fine. In fact, it seems more than fine. And this magma crucible is very fast, which I'm very happy about. So we just need to extract the lava from that magma crucible round and into the magmatic dynamos. And there are a few ways we could do this. You could, of course, put the magmatic dynamo directly next to the magma crucible and just set the corresponding side to auto eject. And that would work. However, if we're going to have a large number of magmatic dynamos, which I think is exactly what we want to do, we're going to want to get a fluid pipe to move that fluid. And in fact, now that we have steel, we have unlocked this set of quests up here that give us access to the mechanism way of moving fluids, items, and power. So uh, right here it says, with steel, you can craft the basic tier of mechanism logistics pipes, allowing you to transfer items, fluids, or energy in an easier manner. And uh, I can't understate enough how much easier I think this is going to be. So uh, most of these are fairly cheap to make. We'll bookmark all three of them because I think getting all three of these might not be a terrible idea. The pretty pipes are fairly cheap, but not super cheap, and they can be a little bit cumbersome. They are definitely, I think, more powerful than the mechanism pipes in the sense of what you can do with the stack limiting and the filtering and, and all that good stuff. But just in terms of basically moving items around from place to place or moving fluids around from place to place simply and easily, the mechanism cables are much simpler. And given that we have a fair amount of steel here, I don't think it's going to be too difficult for us to make our first set of basic mechanical pipes, our first set of basic logistical transporters and our first set of basic universal cables. We're just missing one redstone and boom. So the universal cable moves power and it can move 3,200 redstone flux per tick, which is a substantial upgrade over the 500 redstone flux per tick that our current power starter cables can do. The logistical transporter moves items and the basic mechanical pipe moves fluids. So for us, we of course currently want those basic mechanical pipes. What we can do is we can place the pipe between these two. We can set the bottom of this to output. And then I believe with this, we can just set auto output to enabled and that might start to fill that up. It totally does. Look at that, fantastic. Um, alternatively, if you don't set auto output to enabled or if you have a machine that can't auto output, you can use the configurator here. You do wanna make sure that in the bottom left, it's set to configure it. I don't think it matters which configurate mode it's set to, heat, energy, slurries, pigments, infused types, gases, fluids, or items. So long as it's set to one of those, you can then shift right click on the side where you want to extract from, like this. That's gonna set it to push, which is not what we want. 
you want to right-click again, and that's going to set it to pull. And so now that's going to pull any liquid that it can out of the adjacent block, in this case, the magma crucible, down around into the magmatic dynamo. And then from there, we just want to hook that up to our main line of power. Again, unfortunately, I don't think you can connect the basic universal cables to the energy cables from power. Never mind. It looks like maybe you totally can. Let me get rid of this. These don't have any power. So if I do somewhat jankily something like this, does that work? It totally does. Nice. That is actually taking the power and using it in the machines. I didn't know if this connection would actually work or not, but it totally does. That is very nice indeed. This magma crucible is super fast. And of course, if we wanted to, we could even take the hardened integral component here and place it in to make it even faster, at which point we might actually need a higher tier EMC link. But this does mean that we have a very easy way of generating a very large amount of power. And so I think our best bet right now is probably going to be to kind of tear down most of what's here and replace it with quite a few more magmatic dynamos, which really shouldn't be too difficult for us to get. We've passed the 1 million mark in the top left corner there. We're at 1.35 million EMC now. So uh, if we go back to our tablet, we can grab a stack of gold with relative ease and get that smelting in one of these furnaces. And if we grab a stack of iron and a stack of nickel, we should hopefully be able to get a large amount of invar very quickly as well. And once all of that's smelted, getting a bunch of magmatic dynamos, I don't think it's going to be too hard at all. All right, so a bunch of invar making later, and also a little bit of gold smelting as well. Let's see how many of these magmatic dynamos we can make. So we can make a ton of these coils. Let's go ahead and make like 16 of those. Having extra is going to be fine. We need them to make the thermal expansion machines like the pyrolyzer and the induction smelter anyway. And then here, I think we might try to make nine magmatic dynamos. And by try, I mean kind of just make nine magmatic dynamos. I think we might just be iron limited here. Never mind. Look at that. Nine magmatic dynamos is done. Um, as a quest reward here, we do get 16 more of each of these mechanism cables. So we'll claim all of those and our free bucket of lava. And then down on this lower platform, we might actually have to make the platform a little bigger if we're going to get all 10 of these down. And as I mentioned earlier, we might also have to look at increasing the uh, the speed of our magma crucible. So let's do something like this. And I do now realize that 10 is not an odd number. And so we're not going to get symmetry on this. And so I might temporarily at least just do nine like that, just to keep things symmetrical down here. And then uh, we'll see how it goes. If we need more power, we can always throw that 10th one down. Uh, we could also look at making an 11th one, I think, fairly easily. If, uh, if we really wanted to keep the symmetry, we can then do all of these. And then at that point, we can now go and uh, get rid of the sterling dynamos. These are no longer needed. And we can also move this sawmill, which is probably not going to be needed going forward. I don't think we need the extra efficiency on planks, so we can probably just put this away for the time being. And then uh, we can maybe move the pulverizer and especially the induction smelter, because the induction smelter is uh, what we're going to use in just a moment here to automate steel. So we'll take you, and uh, for the time being, we'll move the sawdust drawer. We'll put that just next to our regular chests for now. Going forward, we're probably going to end up making a lot more storage drawers to hold our items, because we are already running into a storage space here. We don't have a ton of it, and so that's definitely something we're going to have to work on fairly soon. But uh, down here, all of these are receiving power, which is fantastic. Let's get them all connected up with universal cable. And then let's run that up to here. Going forward at some point, we'll definitely replace this um, energy cable with universal cable, just because it's a strictly better cable. And uh, as our machines get more and more power hungry, the, uh, the limit of this cable could prove problematic. But for now, this is working fine. And in fact, all of these are full on lava, which is fantastic. Of course, right now we're not using anywhere near the full uh, 360 redstone flux per tick that we're producing with all of these machines. But let's see if we can't change that. So we need the induction smelter, which is right here. Uh, we also need the pyrolyzer. So the question then becomes, do we have what it takes to make the pyrolyzer? We have what it takes to make another machine frame. Of course, cobblestone is free. And at that point, we're just missing the nether bricks, steel, and two constantan gears. So the nether bricks, we made, but I think that was for the magma crucible, actually. So let's make two more nether bricks. Easy enough. Steel, we have. And then the constantan. I don't think we have any lying around in here. However, 
copper we have, and nickel we also have. In fact, I do believe we're still smelting more nickel over here. And so if we drop both the copper and the nickel, of course, back into the old induction smelter over here, and give it a quick time in a bottle tap, that's going to get us the eight Constantin required for the Constantin gears very quickly. And much like with the Invar gears, I think it's just easier to craft these, uh, even if it is one iron nugget more expensive. Boom, there's our Pyrolyzer. And so now we do have the ability to automate steel because we can use an EMC link to send coal to our Pyrolyzer. We are going to have to process that coal first. I guess we could use uh, the Pulverizer here to automatically process the coal ore into coal. We might want to use the Cactus Augment to get rid of the sulfur and the gravel so that we only get coal when we pulverize coal ore. But then we can take that coal ore, run it into the Pyrolyzer. That's going to allow us to produce coal coke. Again, potentially a Cactus Augment might be useful here to get rid of some of the excesses. Um, I don't know if that gets rid of the Creosote or just the tar, but we can always test it. From there, we can take the coal coke and combine it with iron in the induction smelter to make steel. So that's the entire process there. Over here... We're not backing up on iron. Our redstone furnace isn't fast enough. It's actually our bottleneck right now. You'll see we're not backing up anywhere on iron gears. So if we did want to send some iron over to the pyrolyzer or to the induction smelter for steel, we would probably have to look at making this redstone furnace faster. But that should be fine. Making more of the hardened integral components should not be a problem for us. It's just glass and basic mechanical essence, both of which we have a decent amount of. Now, we also would have to get one of the round robin upgrades as well to allow this to distribute its iron between two machines, but I think that should be fine. So my question now though really is, how do I want to expand the platform out? Because we don't really have the space here to get all of this stuff down. If we're gonna automate the essence here, we're going to need a few more machines. Obviously we need the mixer somewhere to do the final crafting. I think we can kind of replace, we can get rid of this multi-server press because we don't need it. We can use it to do the final uh, craft here instead of doing this craft because going forward, there's no need to be producing both tiers of cube. We only need the newest tier of cube, if that makes sense. And uh, the previous tier of essence is required to make the next tier. So we could kind of reuse this, reuse this. We could send all of the basic mechanical essence from the sequential fabricator directly into our basin. That would be fine. We would then need three more multi-server presses, one for each gear and one for the rods. We'd also need two more induction smelters as well, one to make invar and one to make bronze. The bronze obviously requiring uh, copper and tin, the invar requiring iron and nickel. And both of those, I think, do require that you first smelt the raw ores. You can't just put the raw ores directly in the induction smelter. We have to take the uh, raw iron and the raw nickel, smelt those into ingots or pulverize them into dusts and then uh, put them into the induction smelter. Yeah, this is now doing a lot better, this redstone furnace. It's starting to back up on iron, which is very nice indeed. So after some quick number crunching, we're going to need quite a few machines, like at least 11 more machines, I think, um, from thermal expansion to make this work uh, from redstone furnaces or pulverizers to get us the actual ingots that we then need to make into alloys, that we then need to make into gears, that we then need to make into the final product. I think we will postpone automating this, set, uh, this setup here to next stream. Between streams, I might look at making the platform just a little bit bigger to make room for all of that. Um, but one thing I would like to do, though, before we wrap up for today is I would like to look potentially at getting this um, superior method of making andesite up and running so that we can get uh, into create much more easily in the coming streams. Also, another thing that I would like to do is I would like to get rid of this floating tree that we have in the, uh, the back end of our base here. So if we quickly just kind of nerd pull up to, uh, to the tree, we should be able to use our axe to hopefully now get rid of whatever piece of wood. There it is, like one singular bit of wood that's keeping the whole tree alive fantastic all right people in the twitch chat can uh, can stop complaining about that now i can put all of that dirt back into the transmutation tablet and then let's take a look at getting this guy right here the mechanical press and the quest calls for a depot but we probably don't need the depot for making the andesite in fact for the andesite we just need a basin like we made earlier this guy right here so for the basin we are going to of course need more and a site to begin with. We did make more high covalence dust when we made the new EMC link, which in fact we didn't need, but we made nonetheless. Thankfully, that does mean that we can temporarily do the same thing again here where we use cobblestone and 
covalence dust to make the andesite. And then of course we can once again use our iron nuggets to make even more andesite alloy. From there we can make yet another basin because we, we could have taken this one, but we do need this one for automating the, uh, the regular mechanical essence in the next stream. Now, in terms of making the mechanical press, we need a block of iron, which is not gonna be a problem for us. We also need another andesite casing, which should also be completely fine. It's just one of these. And then finally, we need a shaft, which we were very generously given as a quest reward, and boom, we get the mechanical press. So again, just like with the mixer, for now I'm gonna use the hand crank because we don't have an automatic way of generating stress units. But what we should now be able to do is take this down here and if we can connect this up to our mechanical pipe, in fact, I'm gonna bring it up to the surface. It's gonna look a little janky, but we, again, it's something we'll, we'll move in the near future. What we can do for now is we can run some basic mechanical pipe up and into this basin like that, and then if we run that pipe down and connect it to our lava generation, which should be more than able to handle the uh, extra lava right now because we're not using anywhere near the maximum power output of all of our magmatic uh, dynamos, what we can then do is we can place our mechanical press on top, like so. We can place our hand crank directly onto the mechanical press, unlike the mixer, it doesn't require a cogwheel initially. You can kind of tell which machines require the cogwheel because they've got the little cogwheel next to it. Whereas if a machine just has a little shaft hole, you can just place the uh, hand crank directly onto that machine. And then from here, all we need to do is take some of the gravel and flint that we got last stream. Uh, both of these we got from pulverizing cobblestone. And if we drop both of those into the basin here, we should then be able to just crank this and produce andesite. Now, of course, currently, that's not super fast, and it's a little tedious because we have to do it manually. However, the whole idea with Create is that we can automate this process. One thing we'll look at probably in the next stream is automating the production of stress units. This quest right here talks about the different ways in the early game that we can use to produce stress units. There is the uh, water wheel, there is the windmill, and then it shows the encased fan. I'm actually not quite sure how you use the encased fan to generate stress units, but I do know that we can use the water wheel or the windmill. Once we've got one of those up and running, we can start passively generating stress units, which we can then use to automatically produce andesite, and we can also use to automatically produce uh, this guy right here, because of course, if we actually want to be able to make automatic regular mechanical essence, we are going to have to automate the usage of the mechanical mixer because it's not quite automatic if I have to stand next to the mechanical mixer with a hand crank cranking it in order to make the regular mechanical crystals. But I think, chat, that for the most part, those are all problems for future Isaac. We did get some more cold cock there as a reward, which is very nice. There were a few little small quests here, like leather. You can cook tough fabric into leather. Tough fabric is made from treated sticks and industrial hemp fiber. That's gonna be good for us to know in the future, industrial hemp fiber we can grow with the industrial hemp seeds here. So we can plant those down and use that to get some of the fiber. And then, of course, the treated sticks actually don't need to be treated sticks. Regular sticks will work there, which is uh, very nice indeed. So that's going to be completely fine and is going to be a good source of leather going forward should we need it. Real quick, one thing I might do before we leave here is upgrade our storage system. Because right now we are kind of running a little low on storage space and a very easy way for us to rectify that is by making this guy right here the wood to iron chest upgrade. If you take this and right click it on a wooden chest, it will upgrade it to an iron chest, which is essentially the size of a double chest, but in the space of a single chest. It's a pretty nifty little thing for us to have. Uh, if we had more iron, which I think we might do, we do indeed, fantastic, we could make another one of those. Unfortunately, the iron chests don't connect they're separate entities, but they are substantially bigger than regular chests. And you can even take this further. You can make gold chests. Those are the next year after. And in fact, if we go to at iron chests, you can see that you can turn a regular chest to an iron chest, an iron chest to a gold chest, a gold chest to a diamond chest, a diamond chest to a crystal chest, and then a crystal chest to an obsidian chest uh, right at the highest tiers there. So you can make these quite large. I'm not sure if we're going to go all the way up to those highest tiers because I think we might instead look and to using storage drawers and potentially the pretty pipes mod fairly soon as kind of an early game refined storage slash applied energistics type system 
Uh, Pretty Pipes does have this guy right here, the crafting terminal and the item terminal, which we can use in combination with the pipes and I believe certain modules to allow us to get a bit of a better system for accessing all of the items in our chests and in our storage drawers. Uh, but that, along with the automation of the regular mechanical crystal, is a problem for future Isaac. For now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this episode of Mechanical Mastery there. 